Which is the best running shoe to get you your fastest time this year? Four shoes, four days, 1K flat out in each. There can only be one winner. There are so many super shoes out there now, it can be quite overwhelming. But are Nike still the king of carbon or are there genuine contenders to the throne? Well, I've come to Lanzarote, which is a beautiful place for me to put four of the very best shoes head to head over one kilometer. Now, the Running Channel team have also been testing the same shoes over lots of different distances, so I'm going to do my best to give you some of their insights. But before I get stuck in, pause this video now and let us know which one you think is going to come out on top. Sarah thinks it's going to be the Pumas, Tom is rooting for the Mizunos, and I secretly think that maybe the Sokonis are the ones to finally topple Nike from the top of their perch. Now, let's get stuck in. Okay, so now we're off. The same stretch of road, the same start and finish point, exactly the same distance and at the same time of day, every day over the next four days. And it makes sense to set the benchmark using the original super shoe, the Nike Vaporfly Next% 2. I've run races in this before. I've run a 10K in it, for example. It feels fast, it feels responsive. That combination of a patented carbon fiber plate in combination with the foam, giving you that improved running economy, increasing your efficiency and allowing you to run more quickly for the same effort. That's what's changed the world of running as we know it in the last few years. It feels soft, and actually I would say if I had one criticism of this shoe, it's that it does feel a little bit too soft in some cases, so you can feel a little bit wobbly and unsupported. But running really fast, all out like this, over one kilometer, I could already feel myself being propelled, actually probably slightly too fast in the first 500 meters. I didn't get my pacing quite right, but I was still pushing hard. In the old days, I was used to running in racing flats and you just didn't get anything back from them. But now, the foam, the compound, and the carbon plate in combination, it just feels like you're being pushed and propelled. And even as you get tired, you're still running strongly. And this is a great way to put a benchmark time down to compare the next three shoes to. Okay, benchmark laid down. Let's see how the other shoes get on. They do very genuinely feel like something from outer space. They feel, these feel like something from outer space. Can I just do a stride first? Because I've not even run in them yet. Oh, wow. That is uh, unique. Oh, Jesus. Woo! Even just walking to get started, these feel like nothing I'd ever worn before, and they look like that too. Getting started, they start to feel more natural, although it does take some getting used to the lack of heel support at all. So running more slowly, I definitely think I would have struggled. Now, one thing I immediately noticed as I was running was they felt fast, but I felt completely disconnected from the road. I had absolutely zero feel. I was running on a beautiful flat road surface, but I didn't feel particularly planted. I felt like I was running on some powerful, bouncy pillows, which meant that I couldn't, I had no feel at all for the road, but they were powering me on. I didn't feel as fast as running in the Nikes. Um, I felt like I was more wrestling with the control because I was really felt at risk of kind of going over on an ankle or something like that. But converse to that, I've been chatting to Sarah, she's running a marathon in these and she absolutely loves them. So I definitely think it's horses for courses and perhaps as I'm running, I feel really unnatural here. I'm starting to fatigue, actually potentially a little bit later than I was fatiguing in the Nikes, which is a good sign. Ah. But I could really feel my breathing going and I'm concentrating so hard on the way my feet are hitting the ground. I'm powering myself forward which from my perspective is a disadvantage because I'd rather just be getting on with it and thinking about thinking about the running. Oh, I'm actually pretty surprised. Really surprised at that result. Based on how I was feeling, how they felt on the road, taking all that into account, yeah, big surprise. They feel fast, they just really don't suit the way I run. Even running fast, I thought, I thought running fast. I thought if I was running fast, they would feel great and responsive, just felt completely out of control. Like, I had no control over what my legs are doing. Sort of good, but I don't know how uh, I couldn't run much further than that in anyway. Not without a little bit of training, anyway. Okay, day three now, you know the drill. These are the Puma Fast R Nitro Elite. No more messing about, let's get stuck in, okay. Lacing up and then standing up in the Fast R, they felt the most like a normal running shoe. That is, they felt stable on the ground as I was walking around. The upper gave me the best fit so far as well. I really like the upper. It feels very fast, very minimal, but at the same time, hooked my foot really nicely. And then when I start running, what you do notice is actually that the heel section of foam is quite stiff, quite surprisingly stiff. 
but the transition from that heel onto the amazingly springy forefoot, notice that the heel and the forefoot are completely decoupled here, so there's no contact between these midsole elements other than that exposed carbon plate. But somehow that feels like a much smoother transition. And the key word here for me is planted. I can feel the road. I'm not worrying at all about how I'm making contact with the ground. It just feels really secure. And then all I'm thinking about is my effort. Now these are a, probably a, a shoe that's aimed at a slightly faster audience in terms of maybe 5K, 10K, half marathon. Um, there are other shoes in the Puma range for marathons really. And that might give them a, a bit of an advantage, but I've got no idea whether that's translating into speed. Certainly they feel the best to me right now. I'm enjoying running in them. And I'm just thinking about my form. I'm staying nice and tall, driving my arms, trying to pick my knees up as I power through to that one kilometer mark to see what the time does to the results. <sighs> That felt fast. They felt fast. It really felt fast. My watch has ticked over, so I haven't actually seen the time. But that definitely felt really quick. Maybe the quickest yet. Okay, day four. This is the last one. I'm dreading this. Socony Endorphin Elite. Let's go. By this point, day four, I'm already fatigued. My body is shouting at me that it doesn't want to do it again. So perhaps this isn't a fair test, but immediately on putting on the Saucony Endorphin Elite, they felt like a shoe that has taken what Nike had done in the very beginnings in terms of giving you the highest level of energy return, obviously in my opinion, that's exactly how they felt. So not soft and kind of wallowy like the Nikes, but fairly firm, but then as soon as you sort of put your foot down and power off, the, the amount of energy turn was, it was incredible. Another thing to note is that they have by far the most minimalist upper of any of the shoes on test. Not to their detriment, it's still really comfortable, uh, but there's bits cut away, there's holes in it, it's much thinner. Uh, and there's actually an element that wraps around your the middle of your foot and goes underneath. Uh, you can see it actually from the underneath of the shoe, almost a band of fabric that wraps around. I'm not sure exactly how much that contributes, but they felt like a great fit straight out of the box. These felt super fast. And what was really interesting, alongside potentially the fast R as well, in the last 20 seconds or so of these kilometer efforts, this is the shoe that I felt was all of a sudden giving me a little bit back. Like I had a sort of mini resurgence in that last 20 seconds where I felt like I was all out and I just found a little bit more. Right now, I'm mainly just glad that it's over. Oh. Saving these ones to last was interesting. They feel like a hybrid of the other three, maybe. They felt good. Really interested to compare the times across the board. Let's take a look. I'm so glad that over my body is in pieces. My legs are so sore but it's shown some pretty clear results, at least as far as I'm concerned, in what I'll admit wasn't the world's most scientific test, but it did show some clear differences. So I'm gonna give you the times in the order in which I ran them. So day one was the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent 2, which was two minutes 56 for that kilometer. Followed up with the Mizuno Rebellion Pro, which was 255. Then the Puma Fast Art, which was 251, which genuinely did surprise me how quick that was. And then the final one, the Saucony Endorphin Elite, was also 2.51. So those were the two fastest on test. They also felt the best for me as I was running. They were clearly, they felt quicker and they were helping me out. Which one would I choose? I don't know actually. They fit slightly different and they felt slightly different as I was describing them as I was running. So the Pumas I think would be my choice for shorter, faster efforts. Whereas if I was going a bit longer then that real incredible energy return from the Sauconys might make them my choice. So there you go, you've got some answers to the question as to which are the fastest super shoes right now. And if you want to know anything else, you need to watch this video. This is a video all about the things that you might want to know about running shoes, but potentially were too afraid to ask.